हाय इन्वेस्टर्स वेलकम टू एसओ तो आज के इस बिजनेस एनालिसिस में हम लोग बजाज फाइनेंस की बात करेंगे तो काफी लोगों ने हमसे बहुत टाइम से रिक्वेस्ट करा कि बजाज फाइनेंस का बिजनेस एनालिसिस कीजिए तो आज हम बजाज फाइनेंस का बिजनेस एनालिसिस करेंगे एंड इस बिजनेस एनालिसिस को हम विद मिस्टर साकेत मेहरोत्रा करेंगे हुज ए सी एंड सी एस एंड साथ साथ साकेत मेहरोत्रा एक्टिवली राइट एट बेटा टू एल्फा उसके साथ साथ साकेत मेहरोत्रा इज अ वेरी गुड फ्रेंड एंड ही इज बीन ट्रैकिंग बजाज फाइनेंस फॉर अ मल्टीपल ईयर्स नाउ तो इस बिजनेस एनालिसिस में हम बजाज फाइनेंस की अपॉर्चुनिटीज की बात करेंगे बिजनेस मॉडल की बात करेंगे रिस्क की बात करेंगे डिफरेंट प्रोडक्ट जिसमें वो स्केल कर रहे हैं उनकी बात करेंगे एंड साथ साथ बजाज फाइनेंस का जो आज टेक पे फोकस है हम उसकी भी बात करेंगे एंड फाइनली जो रिस्क है बिजनेस में हम उसकी भी बात करेंगे सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द वीडियो डू स्मैच द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड अगर आपको कोई भी बिजनेस एनालिसिस से रिलेटेड डाउट है तो आप कॉमेंट सेक्शन में जरूर छोड़ दें तो साकेत एंड मैन दोनों बैठकर उन क्वेश्चन को सॉल्व करेंगे होप टू सी यू इन द बिजनेस एनालिसिस Hi investors, welcome to SOIC. So, आज के सेशन में वी आर विद मिस्टर साकेत मेहरोत्रा एंड वॉट वील बी डूंग इसके हम जो बजाज फाइनेंस का पूरा जो क्यू वन एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री का रिजल्ट है उसको डिस्कस करेंगे साथ साथ जो बजाज फाइनेंस का बिजनेस मॉडल है उस पर भी डिस्कशन करेंगे एंड हाउ द बिजनेस मॉडल इज मूविंग एंड क्या क्या वेरियस बिजनेस मॉडल के पार्ट्स हैं वो भी डिस्कस करेंगे एंड जहां जहां पे कोई क्वेश्चन होंगे तो आई कीप आस्किंग मिस्टर आई कीप आस्किंग दो क्वेश्चन टू मिस्टर साकेत मेहरोत्रा एंड साथ में अगर आपको भी कोई क्वेश्चन हो इस प्रेजेंटेशन के बाद तो आप कॉमेंट सेक्शन में छोड़ सकते हैं साकेत और मैं उन क्वेश्चन का आंसर जरूर करेंगे So with this over to you Sakit. Thanks Vishnu Mohit uh, thanks for having me. Uh so basically uh, you know we just some premise before we start we had a 4 hour long uh, presentation on Bajaj and the future of fintech and how we see this company evolving a while back so you know for viewers who are a part of the SOIC membership or for people who are not a part of that membership they can you know take up that membership and see that a lot of people have found that uh, quite interesting uh, so you know we've discussed that uh, in in vivid detail in that presentation but uh, because you know we have a very limited amount of time so we'll try and condense some parts of that discussion here as well uh, when we talk about bajaj finance so obviously uh, you know when we talk about bajaj finance uh, we have to look at three things and this is why i've managed to keep it short so there's a past which all of us are aware of you know kaise is company ne blitz scale karke grow ki hai apni aum ko from a base of 2500 crores to almost 2 lakh crores in in the last 15 years then obviously there's the present and then there's the future where do we see this company going ahead so uh, you know just for the sake of brevity we'll we'll spend some time in talking about the past because that will give us the foundation to talk about what is happening in the present scenario and how does the future look so past may we've seen bajaj finance has started off as a consumer or it started off as a as an offshoot of the auto finance business of 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 bajaj auto and then it got itself diversified uh, into a lot of unsecured loan products which a lot of companies or nbfcs in india have not been able to do it successfully but these guys have managed to let's say even keep diversifying into multiple products and blitz scale their aum in the last 15 years and does it only come at the cost of you know growth no the answer is no because over the last 10 15 years they've also managed to keep their nps very low so koi bhi lender aap dekho chahe wo bank ho ya nbfc ho uh, you know chasing growth uh, at the cost of profitability can hurt you later because when the asset blow up start happening the npa numbers suddenly spike up until now we've not seen that happen with bajaj which is why Uh, it continues to trade at the multiple uh, which it trades at versus let's say other players so that's the past right uh, in the present you know what has suddenly happened is that they've also become a very formidable player in the housing finance space now this is a space which is also not very roi accretive versus let's say the other uh, segments or asset classes which are there but it's also a, a customer base or let's say a, a product which a lot of people want to get into because it sticks for 15 10 20 years right and in the future bajaj is on a process of going into a tech led transformation where we could see a possible super app and you know this quarter onwards they've also uh, given us some additional disclosures which you know are related to their digital transformation and what exactly is the value coming from all these digital initiatives that bajaj has been taking uh, for the last year or so and they've been talking about it in in all their con calls right 
So that I think is how uh, we'll go ahead with the presentation. So obviously there's a 15 year track record of, of hyper growth that Bajaj has managed to demonstrate. This is something which they disclose in their uh, quarterly investor presentation. So all these slides are taken from that. Anyone can uh, go and see it on their website as well. Uh, what is very interesting is if you see the journey from FI08 all the way to FI22, the NPA numbers, I mean, if you actually see from 11 to 22, right, for the last 11 years, the NPA numbers have actually managed to remain in less than 1% bracket. And the AUM has continued to grow at a CAGR of almost 37%. And as well as the pad growth has been almost 50% for the last 10-12 uh, years. So uh, this just is before going ahead, can you just explain some of these uh, line items of the income statement of a bank or an NBFC just for the interest of the viewer so that uh, it will be easier for him to understand as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I mean, any PNL of any bank or NBFC, if you see, uh, you have something called a, it starts with uh, something called interest income, right? So this is basically the income that you earn on let's say the products that you're lending at the end of the day what is the business of a bank or an mbfc it takes money from people so it has sources of fund which is the liability for a bank and then it lends to people which is the application of fund or which are the assets for the bank so let's say if we talk about bajaj bajaj now now as a bank you have access to casa so you get current account and savings account and you get other sources of fund which is not the advantage for an nbfc so aap kabhi bhi uh, you know, you'll see at any NBFC versus a bank, you'll always see the cost of funds for an NBFC is always higher versus a bank. So just to give you some context, the cost of funds for an SBI or a HDFC bank would be in the range of three and a half, four percent. But whereas for an NBFC like Bajaj, the cost of funds could be six and a half, seven, seven and a half percent. And for other NBFCs, it could be eight, eight and a half, etc. So, jab aapka jo raw material ya ingredient hai, uh, which becomes a little costlier versus when you look at banks. So obviously you will try and lend into products or into customer categories where you're able to earn a higher interest income. Now, someone who has a great credit score will always get funds at a lower cost of capital, right? So if let's say you have a credit score of 800 plus uh, and I have a credit score of let's say 700 or 600, uh, you could get a loan at 9% and I would probably get a loan at 11%. So obviously for you, uh, the, I mean, let's say for you, uh, you would be the ideal customer for a bank, whereas I would be an ideal customer for an NBFC. So, ye to raha credit score ko leke. But then it also spans across, uh, spans across multiple categories of products. So, let's say today, if you are taking an unsecured loan for, let's say, a consumer durable product, let's say for a washing machine, that is a pure unsecured product, and obviously it will have a higher uh, let's say yield for the NBFC to sort of uh, lend to. Whereas versus a bank, a bank might not get into it because even though yields are there, maybe bank ko us customer segment ko cater karne ki zarurat hi nahi hai. Kyunki uski cost of funds hi itni kam hai. He would ideally want to do more mortgages, more let's say auto loans or you know simple personal loans which a lot of banks are now getting very aggressive on. So your PNL starts with income, which is the net interest income that you make. So obviously it's a it's the difference between what is the money you're making on the assets or the loans that you've given, less what is your cost of funds. So that becomes your net interest income. Then obviously, if you are a bank, you need to operate branches. If you're, let's say, a bank, uh, which is uh, on the growth trajectory, so you need to keep opening branches. So those are your operating expenses. Mein aa uh, higher the branches or higher the growth of your branches, higher will be the OPEX because branches may have rent cost, aa jata hai, employee cost, aa jata hai, etc. And then the most important uh, uh, metric beyond all of these in the PNN is something called provisioning. So if today you are lending 100 rupees and you have, let's say, a 100 rupees loan book, uh, there could be a large possibility that one or two people or maybe five people do not end up paying that money back. So right. you have to provide for that today. Just say, baad mein jab ye blow ups aaye, to aapka PNL bigger nings hai. So a lot of times you will see this is something which different managements have different perspectives on. Some people like to front load all of these charges so that jab earnings aaye, you know, PNL mein pura straight flow through ho PBT mein. Whereas some people try to manage it conservatively. They will probably not want to provision the entire 5 rupees in one go. They'll probably provision 1 or 2 rupees earlier. So, so obviously there are regulations and RBI clearly defines metrics, but at the end of the day, whether a customer is credit worthy or not, at some level, there is a little bit of qualitative call that people take 
rather than doing it more on a quantitative basis. So it's a mix of both. So that I think is is how the PNL uh, of a bank would look like. So you start with AUM. Uh, what is let's say the asset base that you have? So obviously it's maybe on balance sheet or balance sheet mix. Hai. That's again another variable one can explore if someone wants to go deeper. Uh, so net net, you look at what is the net interest income that you make. What is your OPEX? What is your provisioning? And finally, your PAC. So that typically is how it works. And the good part about, let's say, a bank or an NBFC is the raw material is money and the final product is money, right? So your reinvestment immediately gets deployed back into the business. Whereas, let's say, if you're a manufacturing company or if you're a FMCG company, you might, let's say, if you want to reinvest money back into the business, you have to, let's say, set up a plant. Uh, you know, that goes live, uski capacity utilization hai, kam ho hai. and accordingly, uske baad you see the results coming in. Whereas here, the money straight away can be deployed back into the business. So you can, you know, straight away start lending more money or you can lever up more, you know, using your equity, you can take on more debt or leverage and then start lending more. So that typically is how a bank or NBFC gets a little separated versus let's say traditional companies, which is why a lot of times the valuation metric to look at for banks would more likely be price to book than price to earnings. Ki aapka book mein strength kya hai? Why exactly am I willing to pay a price for your book? Because I feel okay, you know, you have a great history or you have good lending practices and there is, a, let's say a lower risk of blow ups happening because you've demonstrated uh, to the street or you've demonstrated to people that you're able to do this uh, very efficiently without, let's say, uh, taking on a lot of risk in the system or you're able to manage risk very well. That is what the price to book tells you. Right, right. I think one more very interesting uh, point just to add to Saket's uh, income statement, like how does the income statement of a bank or an NBFC look like? Is ki, pehle kya tha ki jo NPA numbers hai, so what used to happen was ki, I think till FY 14-15, so six months tak ke, uh, agar aapke NPA se due nahi hai, or yaan, uh, malab, EMI pay nahi hai, then you had to recognize that ki wo NPA ke andar aata. Then FI 16 ke andar kya hua, phir wo five months tak hua. FI 17 mein four months tak hua. And FI 18 onwards wo three months tak ho gaya. Three months maane ke 90 days tak agar aapke, uh, e, agar EMI is nahi aari, then, it, then the loan slips into an NPA. So here, if you look at NP accounting, mein, agar aap dekhe, to basically standard assets. Hai, phir SMA bucket 1, hai, SMA bucket 2. Hai, phir aise different, different buckets. Hoti hai. Dek, ek bucket hoti hai, 1 to 30 days. Tak hai. Hai, hai, 30 to 90 days. Tak hai. Phir 30 to 90 days, tak aari, uske baad wo loan slip karke NPA. Ke andar chale jata hai. So it's a very simple way and over a period of time, as Saket will also have observed, that the NPA's ke jo recognition norms are very strict in RBI according to RBI. In 2010 and 2011, ke time pe, log lending and the loans were evergreening. But RBI has in the last uh, 6 to 7 years, the NPA ke accounting is very strict. Kar and साथ साथ loan ever winning करने को तो बहुत ways हैं अभी भी करने के but think, I think uh, NBA NBFC तो banks के बीच का भी जो regulatory arbitrage है वो भी कम होते जा रहे हैं so this is one thing that is happening just as a like just as a overall overview of the industry कि एक चीज यहाँ पे अभी हो रही है what do you say thanks yes uh, that I think is quite interesting in fact uh, ever greening की तो बात छोड़ो अभी तो lending में भी ऐसा आ गया है because of let's say so many criminal liabilities that have been put or let's say reckless lending and all. So not just on the customer side, but even on the banking side, people have become very particular about who they are lending to and what they are lending for. So ye, at some level, you know, that the grip has actually become more stronger on that uh, because of, let's say, regulatory changes. So coming back to Bajaj, uh, as I said, right, it started off as an offshoot to the auto finance business of, of the Bajaj group. And then what is interesting is over the years, uh, they've not just managed to diversify on just, let's say, one customer vertical. So, consumer ki baat kare to auto loan se, you got into consumer durable loans, personal loans, two-wheeler, three-wheeler loan to thi, uh, lifestyle financing, etc. They also went into different customer bases. So, SME uh, loans way, commercial lending wa, rural lending wa, deposits. And abhi, uh, very recently, they also got the approval to operate a PPI uh, instrument, which is something like a Paytm wallet that Bajaj can do on its, if, if, if let's say they are launching an app, which is what they've been talking about, Uske andar mein they can have a wallet, uh, which you can load with money uh, and, and maybe also use credit to load that wallet. Uh, for other 
let's say if you've seen you know for multiple times rbi keeps coming out with a regulation almost uh, uh, every week now uh, for i mean the broader interest obviously is that a systemic risk nahi ban jaye system mein because of reckless lending and b at the same time this just works very well into the advantage of well run banks and nbfcs who, who jinka primary job is to lend so it's actually giving them more uh, wherewithal to ensure that they are able to tap into this whole uh, new digital age to let's say scale themselves up better so that is very clear about how uh, things are going to pan out even from a regulatory perspective and finally what is very interesting about bajaj is the number of partnerships they have signed up uh, chahe wo let's say cross sell karne ke liye ho for insurance or let's say cross sell karna ho so they partnered with a few banks for credit cards us se they make free income so these are some things which uh, because they have got now a good distribution network which is through people sitting in let's say some of these uh, white goods stores or let's say foot foot on the ground for people who do recoveries in case you know wo slippages aaye ya np hone ke pehle you ensure that the uh, lending doesn't go bad they are actually able to tap into this network of sales folks to ensure that cross sell is something that they uh, do very effectively and we'll see that in a subsequent slide and so bajaj finance was was what we saw so they also got into the housing finance business uh, where they now have multiple products and the new business that they are actually uh, you know looking at very seriously which uh, even rajiv jain mentioned in in the latest con call is the securities business which they plan to scale up from here on now uh, using the let's say the scaling uh, strength that we've seen or the execution capability we've seen with finance and housing finance with securities into the future so uh, so this was in the past and what i said uh like this is uh, this is also quite interesting right uh almost 35% of the pbt that bajaj finance makes uh, comes from fee income which basically means that uh, almost uh, let's say two thirds uh, or one third more than one third of your pnl has no relation to whatever interest rate changes happen and even if we talk about interest rate changes right this is a graph for almost the last 7 to 8 odd years Uh, you see the cost of funds for bajaj has actually been coming down so they have actually managed to bring the cost of funds for almost 9 and 1/2 10% to 6.6% now this has been driven by two things one is i think bajaj finance is probably the only nbfc in this country uh, jab aap iski liability mix dekho to almost 20% of the liability mix is in deposits so these are deposits which uh, and is may be almost 80 90% 80% is retail uh folks so despite being at a disadvantage with respect to banks because banks mein aap ek savings account khol sakte ho current account khol sakte ho they managed to you know sell this product very well which is uh, deposits where you can do a fixed deposit with bajaj finance and that has helped them uh bring down the cost of funds at the same time uh, they've also managed because credit rating upgrades aati hai as a as a lender or let's say a top tier lender you are also able to tap into the money market and raise money whenever you want to so aise karke you know because they've also demonstrated their track record the cost of funds have have come down quite significantly and uh, this is something which is at some level you know sets them apart from a lot of other nbfcs as well and uh, despite the scale up and despite the fact that today they are operating pan india in multiple locations the cost to income ratio has also been or this is something called opex to nii which people like to call it is in that 35 36% range one more thing before we get into the present and the future uh, what is very interesting about bajaj is how they've uh, maintained the discipline of ensuring that we never exceed the 7x leverage mark so ismoy jaise ki main keh raha tha ki aapki pnl mein ye ye items hai now as a lender what do you do let's say you put 10 rupees from your own pocket there is using this 10 rupees you can end up gearing however money you much money you want to gear and what does that mean so you put 10 rupees from your own pocket right and let's say you take 40 rupees of leverage so on the liability side you have 50 rupees on your balance sheet and let's say you lend 50 rupees of loans now the moment uh 10 rupees of the loan goes bad your equity gets wiped out to zero right which is why jab uh, log npa numbers dekhte to aadha 1% bhi idhar udhar movement hone se people start getting spooked right and so, i think is wajah se capital adequacy ratio ke norms bhi hai ki itna to aapko balance sheet pe paisa maintain karke rakhna hi padega right 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 
and usme bhi you know there are other metrics on top so you have crar where you put risk weights to to the asset side that you've lent but net net the idea is why leverage is a great thing or let's say it it's like a double edged sword for banks right because you need leverage for growth if you don't have the capital or let's say if you take up more capital you can lever more but at the same time you also need to ensure that your risk management on the asset side is is you know robust so that you don't end up blowing your bank or you don't end up blowing the company so what is very interesting is the moment bajaj reaches that 6.5 or 6.6 threshold on the debt to equity ratio they raise capital so they've done a cap raise in march 15 they did a cap raise in march 17 and they also did a cap raise right before covid had hit which was in march 19 or so and you know the number that you see now which is almost 4.8 which basically means that right now they can still lever up till almost 6 and a half 7 again for let's say any incremental growth they foresee and then again maybe do a qip in the future to sort of bring that down and then see how uh, let's say growth trajectory evolves so this is something which is uh, interesting for bajaj because at that level when you almost go seven times levered and we'll see it in the last slide when we look at price to book they are actually able to raise capital at the valuation that they want to raise yeah. rather than let's say generally uh, ek company ko capital ki zarurat kab hoti hai jab or let's say bank ya nbfc ko capital ki zarurat kab hoti hai jab ya to asset side mein kafi blow ups ho rahe hai so you need infusion which is what we've seen let's say in the last 10 15 years with a lot of psu banks they kept needing capitalization because there was multiple blow ups happening on the asset side or if you want to grow your book right to ya to aap leverage lo आप लेवरेज नहीं ले पा रहे हो दैट मींस यू नो यू आर ऑलरेडी लेवर्ड टू द टी व्हिच मींस यू नीड टू इंट्रोड्यूस कैपिटल सो दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच इज इंटरेस्टिंग और और पुट्स बजाज इन अ स्वीट स्पॉट बिकॉज़ इट कंटीन्यूज टू ट्रेड लेट्स से एट अ रिचर मल्टीपल दे आर एबल टू रेज कैपिटल एट द प्राइस दैट दे वांट टू रेज एंड दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच आई थिंक आई फाइंड इट अ लिटिल यूनिक फॉर देम वर्सेस लेट्स से अदर एनबीएफसीज व्हिच आर देयर I think it's like fortification of balance sheet. अगर आपके asset side पे खराब हो रहा है, तो you'll try to fortify your balance sheet. And the right. second thing is uh, that uh, for a bank or an NBFC, equity capital is the growth capital, and that is what Bajaj Finance has been doing. Is because asset side पे problem नहीं है, तो fortification का इतना problem नहीं है. So their problem will be the growth side because अगर return on equity 22 percent है, if you want to grow at 30 percent. तो जो आठ परसेंट का शॉर्टफॉल या ब्रिज आ जाता है तो यू विल हैव टू इवेंचुअली रेस कैपिटल क्योंकि लेवरेज आप सेवन एक्स के ऊपर तो वैसे ही आपका सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स तक का आप लिमिट लेके चल रहे हो कि इसके ऊपर तो मेरे को लेवरेज करना ही नहीं है तो आई थिंक दैट्स अ वेरी गुड पॉइंट दैट साकेत हैज मेड कि बजाज फाइनेंस इंटरनली ये मेट्रिक लेके चल रहा है कि सेवन के ऊपर हमें नहीं करना और सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स पे जैसी लेवरेज पहुंचता है तो आप आर को आप डी कंस्ट्रक्ट कर सकते हो टू लाइक नेट प्रॉफिट बेसिकली जो नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन होते हैं फिर रिटर्न ऑन एसेट लाइक अगर आप रिटर्न ऑन एसेट्स ले लो या नेट प्रॉफिट और एसेट टर्न इन टू फाइनेंशियल लेवरेज का एक एग्जाम्पल ले लो तो बैंक्स में क्या आएगा या एन में क्या आएगा रिटर्न ऑन एसेट जस्ट इन टू फाइनेंशियल लेवरेज तो आपका रिटर्न ऑन इक्विटी आ जाएगा तो फाइनेंशियल लेवरेज जो वाला पार्ट है यहाँ पे क्योंकि फाइनेंशियल लेवरेज इज अ टू एजेड स्क्वाड तो बजाज फाइनेंस बोलते हैं कि हम कभी भी 6.3, 6.6 या 6.8 से ज्यादा नहीं लेके जाएंगे जैसे ही ज्यादा जाएगा हम उसी टाइम पे इक्विटी रेस कर लेंगे एंड इक्विटी रेस करने से हमारा फाइनेंशियल लेवरेज उसी टाइम पे कट जाएगा एंड एज साकेत मैं जब वैल्युएशन स्लाइड पे चलेंगे तो एक कम्पिटेटिव एडवांटेज है उस पर आके बात करेंगे बैंक्स जैसे कि बजाज की अगर बात करें तो यू नो आर ओ एट से अगर जून में अगर आपको इसकी आर ओ निकालनी है आर ओ एज ऑलमोस्ट फाइव पॉइंट थ्री टाइम्स एंड द लेवरेज इज ऑलमोस्ट फाइव एक्स तो ऑलमोस्ट चौबीस पच्चीस परसेंट का आर ओ ई है इस बिजनेस का एज ऑफ नाउ सो सो दिस वॉज ऑन द पास राइट नाउ इफ यू लुक एट द प्रेजेंट सो इन ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी वन नाउ दीज आर स्टिपिट टेक इन फ्रॉम अ ब्रोकरेज रिपोर्ट इन ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी वन Uh, Bajaj Housing Finance actually had a AUM of almost thirty-eight thousand nine hundred odd crores, and it was let's say the uh, almost uh, the sixth largest housing finance player in India. And uh, as of June twenty-two, the the latest quarterly earnings, their exit AUM was almost sixty-six thousand odd crores. And if you see the way they have blitzscaled the growth in the last three years, their AUM just the housing finance AUM has grown at forty-five percent. Their PAT has grown at eighty-five percent. and their npas are almost uh, less than 0.2% it's almost 0.14% so what we are seeing right now especially with housing finance for bajaj is what we saw they do 
blitz scaling with respect to their consumer B2C and other verticals. Now they've done it with housing finance business. So last year in the AGM, that is what Rajiv Jain talked about that, uh, you know, this year is going to belong to housing finance and that is what uh, we want to see. In fact, he's also laid out in this AGM that the next year belongs to the security securities business uh, and so on and so forth. So that is something that uh, they want to blitz scale in the next leg of growth for Bajaj Finance. So uh, even if you look at the housing finance book, uh, they give the disclosure of that across multiple products. So the home loan business is almost 65% of their AUM. Or it's almost 58% uh, of their AUM. So they book some home loans so under Bajaj Housing Finance, which is a subsidiary, and then uh, under Bajaj Finance, you have something which is all, right? So almost 60% of the book is the home loans business. LRD is something which has grown at almost 40%. So lease rent discounting is basically, let's say, if there is a commercial property, ho, and you know that there is a lease rent hai every month. So you take it discounting and take it financing. Le lete ho. एक तरफ से ये secured lending भी कह सकते हो क्योंकि you have visibility over the receivables uh, and accordingly you lend based on that just how they managed to pioneer this uh, I mean we talked about this in the in that webinar that Bajaj was actually one of the first NVFCs in India which actually showed people that a cash flow based lending model create kiya ja sakta hai with good risk management rather than a traditional uh, asset backed lending jo india mein uh, aaj bhi kafi popular hai. so just to give you an example you know i was going through the numbers of uh, of a retail chain uh, unlisted hai uh, uh, just for my own interest to see how they are doing it's a local retail chain uh, out of east india now what i see in their books uh, to even avail a small line of credit or working capital which you know as a retailer you might end up needing to have they actually have a mortgage uh, they actually have a charge on their fixed assets and uske against me, they have a term loan, right? Now, the, the challenge here is even for a very small short-term need, aapko working capital bahut bar, you know, uh, asani se nahi milti hai. Because people are very skeptical ki unsecured loan hai, uh, or, or you get it at a very high rate of interest, almost it goes up 15, 16, 17%, which as a businessman or as someone who's running a business uh, with, with cash flows, you would not want to even avail. So people end up, putting a charge on the premises or on the fixed asset and then go for a regular uh, home loan kind of a product for needs which are related to working capital. So so coming back uh, on the commercial side, that is something which is uh, quite visible. So they've grown that book almost 40% uh, within, within a one year time frame. LAP is again something which, uh, I mean, you basically put a, a property on, you put a charge on the property, you take money and there is no restriction on end use and home loans is something which you know you buy a home and you know you pay emis every month for the ownership of the home so uh, developer financing while it's a very small proportion of their uh, book there's something which people raised that they managed to grow that 70 percent but they said that even here it's not that they are going after let's say uh, developers which do not have a great credit history but the top tier developers so that uh, you know, there are no blow ups on NPAs happening ahead. Now, just to give you context, this is a very tricky uh, segment of customers that you lend to. There was a point of time in India when developer financing was all the rage. There were NBFCs that, you know, just focused on this segment. And when the asset cycle turned, uh, when, when the business cycle turned, you saw a slew of NPAs coming in and a slew of blow ups happen. And this is something which is a very tricky segment to lend to because at the end of the day, developers say you will get your money once A, his asset gets ready and B, the asset gets sold. So until these two events don't happen, uh, you know, you can't expect any recovery to come on your uh, financing, which uh, is something which has been sort of a slippery ground in India, especially even with, let's say, you know, even with the best name real estate developers uh, in this country. So that is, is how their housing finance book looks like. It's obviously driven by home loans, which is the core mortgage product and lab and LRD. So almost 80% of the book is that. So even from a, let's say a risk perspective, the diversification also one can say is well diversified across products. Obviously in a LRD or a developer financing, you will get, let's say a higher yield. So that, you know, makes up for going down a little on the risk curve. But here is something, I mean, in a traditional mortgage or a 
or a lap, you would probably not make that kind of ROAs, which you would make on the consumer B2C, B2C side, etc. You know, summing up, their core business still continues to grow in double digits. So uh, there is something which they've talked about. So the auto finance business is something they said that they are scaling down uh, for reasons, uh, you know, I think 16% NPAs in the last update that we had shared, uh, I think Q3 may have an update shared thi thi. And then, you know, as on Q1 also, the NPA numbers are almost around 8-9%. So yes, the stress has come down, but it's still a, a segment that they actually want to run down. The other interesting thing was, you know, they said that, see, last year, the whole IPO party was on. Uh, even, you know, the RBI, before the RBI restriction came on people taking IPO financing. So that was a segment they were able to capture very well, uh, made a book of almost 3,000 crores on IPO financing. And they said that, look, uh, the IPOs are over, the regulatory changes come in. So we've exited this business full-fledged. So that is also something which, you know, kind of goes to show that how resilient you are in tapping on business opportunities that come up. Uh, so that, uh, I think, is is how the book looks like. I mean, if you see, uh, contrary to what people think, urban B2C business, which is where they are lending, uh, you know, for these white goods, etc., which is what people think is their core business, that is almost 20% of their book. So less than one fifth of the book is now this, which used to be bread and butter when they started business. So now they use this as a hook to get customers and then upgrade them to better products. And obviously we saw now it's not just consumers that they are lending to, but also SMEs, rural, commercial, etc. And also got into partnerships of let's say co-branded credit cards, uh, wallets, etc. So that is something which uh, Bajaj has shown is how diversified they are and her segment may they are almost growing in double digits, even in a base which is almost two lakh crores now. So obviously, one sixty pay uh, two lakh crores is almost thirty percent. But the question to ask is, from here on and out, are they able to maintain this growth trajectory to continue trading at that rich multiple that they command? That is a question that uh, one needs to assess. So obviously, as I said, a lot of times growth comes at the cost of pro it comes at the cost of uh, credit quality. Uh, growth ko zyada chase karoge. We've seen this in the past with multiple financial institutions. Front loading of income bahut zyada ho gai. Aapne provisioning thik se nahi ki. And then you saw a slew of NPA blowups happen. So yes, as the base keeps getting bigger, these are risks that one should not forget about as an investor because uh, you know, for something to blow up overnight, it uh, it can just happen, you know, in the in 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 let's say the snap of a finger. So uh, up until now, they managed to demonstrate that quite well. They've provided for for whatever uh, stress they feel happens in their lending. I mean, obviously, one thing is you lend uh, in a very effective way so that you know you don't end up having stress. But a lot of times, stress can come through some external factors as well, right? So let's say if someone has lent heavily to the hotel space and suddenly COVID hit. So you know for two years, your book has gone for a toss, right? Which is, let's say, could have happened for someone who was just lending to, to let's say, the tourism space uh, before COVID happened. So there could be shocks which are internal and there could be shocks which are external. So as a lender, you need to ensure that you provide for these shocks uh, and as and when the risk event materializes, you ensure that you are able to, uh, you are able to protect yourself from those shocks. So up until now, as I said, auto finance business is still something that... So uh, to sum up, basically, the uh, credit quality is not a compromise nahi rahe, as a result of which NPAs of, of multiple segments have remained under that 1% mark. Uh, that is something uh, which, as I said in the start, if your growth bade, to aapka AUM bade. at the same time, is your NPAs also going up? Uh, if NPAs are not growing, then you provisioning se kar rahe, which means it sort of validates that your lending practices are sound. Hai. At the same time, there is no recovery metric or at the same time, the uh, blow-ups of risk that you manage or the risk of managing your capability is a little superior. That is what the NPA numbers tell you. So even on banks, if you see uh, you know, obviously the banks like, let's say an HDFC or a Kotak bank will have way better NPA numbers than when you see uh, even private sector banks in that pack. And if you look at other names, so that sort of tells you how uh, good your underwriting standards are. And as a result, that also translates into the price to book multiple that the market is willing to give you uh, on uh, on your company.
So looking into the future, as I said, uh, you know, there are three things one needs to look at. Ek to obviously, the existing business hai, that continues to grow and us may NPA blow ups na ho because that today is almost 2 lakh crores of, of AUM. So uh, the newest kid on the block is something which they've talked about is, is Bajaj Financial Security. So this is something which Rajiv Jain ma- mentioned in the concourse. So for Q1 of FI23, the pad from this business was 1 crore, which is you know quite insignificant when you look at the total pad of the company. So what they said that, look, we don't want to, we don't have to go and uh, get new customers. We already have 60 million customers, who we cross-sell, with our relationship. Hai. So ab in mein se hi we have to, let's say, get people active and get them onto our platform. So they've started, they've taken a different approach. Margin trade financing, MTF is something that uh, they've sort of looked at as a product to get some of these CREM users. That book is almost 740 crores. And they said that, and this is what he mentioned, right? That uh, in this AGM, uh, the current year belonged to BHFL as a subsidiary. Next year, you should also read into BFSL. So securities business is something that they are looking at seriously. Obviously, this is a business that has disruption across players, old and new. Uh, whether you look at, let's say, discount brokers like Zerodha or even, you know, old age traditional brokers like ICICI, SEC, uh, etc. So there's a lot going on in this space. So it'll be interesting to see how they are able to carve a niche out. So they've said that we don't have to go mass market and acquire new customers. Our existing customer base hai of 6 crore or 60 million customers, hum inko hi uh, we'll try and get them on board through a repiloting franchise, chai wo MTF, wo, you know, I mean, obviously a year back it was IPO funding. So obviously, us time pe maybe they didn't look at scaling this uh, into, into something because their focus was more on the housing finance side. But it'll be interesting to see how this pans out, right? So this can be a great optionality for their business going forward. The other thing is, you know, this is, these are some of the new metrics that Bajaj has started publishing from this quarter onwards. Uh, you know, they've talked about their digital tech stack for, for a while now. So they've actually started publishing numbers related to that as well as uh, your, uh, let's say, branch numbers, kitne locations may in key presence. Hai. Uh, they also talked about the fact that they are now opening exclusive gold loan branches because that's a business that they also want to tap into very exclusively. Uh, so the target for this year is to open another 80 branches. Abhi, they have almost 160 exclusive gold loan branches. Um, and that is something which uh, they want to scale up for FI23 as well. The other interesting thing is, you know, they've started uh, for people who like to track, let's say, app metrics or people who like to look at digital uh, metrics of, of some of these tech companies. So us, us relation mein ya us tehet mein, they've started putting these out that kitne downloads way, kitne installs hai, uh, in-app programs humne kitne run ki, etc. Wallet accounts kitne khule hai. Uh, and while these are the numbers which, you know, uh, as investors will not, you know, take you at the end of the day, is key objective kya hai. So, is se kya meaningful contribution aari hai, loan book pe uh, ya growth pe. So, what was interesting was, you know, personal loan disbursement through the app today, as on Q1, is almost 2100 crores. So, I was reading an article, I think on Ken, this was a year back, I think last year, which I think numbers ki cred may be just say for example you can get a personal loan they have something called cred cash this is obviously in partnership with a few banks uh, so Usme had read that in a year they were managed to they had managed to let's say grow that book to 1000 crores now Bajaj if you see I mean TK, this is you know the brand is established etc uh, so they as on Q1 the personal loan book is almost 2100 crores they've given a guidance that by the end of FI23 this number should be 10,000, 9 to 10,000 crores is what they aspire to achieve. So that, uh, I mean, and that is how, you know, things happen in digital. While, you know, these guys without digital have blitzscaled so well, using digital, they should ideally be able to blitzscale faster. That is the uh, premise that one can work with. Now, whether they are able to execute that or not, that is something which, uh, you know, we'll only get to know in due course of time. So this is also something that they've started disclosing, you know, uh, kitna business are apps, se, kitne acquisitions or card ho, credit cards, ho, etc. Uh, also, you know, they have thrown in a bunch of numbers. If one has to, let's say, compare some of these numbers with, let's say, some players in the unlisted space or some players uh, who are operating uh, not in the lending space, but let's say 
चाहे वो कोई मार्केट प्लेस रन कर रहा हो या यू नो अभी बी एन पी एल वॉज ऑल द रेज एंड यू नो आर बी आई हैज एक्चुअली ऑलमोस्ट एंडेड दैट पार्टी विच वॉज गोइंग ऑन फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम सो नाउ you one it's it's at some level safe to assume that any incremental lending which is going to happen will happen on through banks or nbfcs and uh, bajaj being a top tier nbfc could be the partner of choice for a lot of these players so with that in mind uh, now for someone who likes to look at uh, tech updates or or you know understand tech better uh, this is something which one can look at so they had started publishing this almost i think uh a year and a half back and uh they basically divided into three phases as to how they'll implement a lot of these uh, parameters within the feature set and you know uh, i'll again uh, reference to that video where uh, if you know you can go on 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 the syc uh, learning platform and 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 watch that we both ishmoit and i had discussed quite exhaustively as to what the whole fintech landscape or ecosystem can evolve into so yes they have aspirations to become a super app uh, they have launched multiple feature sets here and there and in the future also they aim to sort of complete this whole process so this is something which they uh, disclose in, in in every investor presentation pehle it used to be at the forefront now uh, they put it as an annexion because now they have these new metrics that they've started to disclose so finally you know obviously this is something which a lot of us or or, or you see investors talk about uh, valuations when when they look at bajaj finance saying that it's always richly valued so uh, if you look at their 10 year price to book the median price to book has always been 8 8 and a half times uh, as i said you know they have this internal uh, metric ki jab bhi hamari threshold 7 ke aas pass hai uh, leverage ki we do a cap raise so jaise humne dekha ki uh, almost i think uh, तीन बार जब ये कैप रेज हुई इन 15, 17 एंड 19, राइट सो इफ यू लुक एट द प्राइस टू बुक मल्टीपल सो 15 में लेट्स से समवेयर हियर वाज व्हेन दे डिड द कैप रेज 17 में अगेन समवेयर हियर इज वेयर दे डिड द कैप रेज 19 ऑब्वियसली कोविड आल्सो केम इन बिटवीन सो यू सी दिस बिग ब्लिप दैट कम्स इन बट द आईडिया इज बिकॉज़ यू ट्रेड एट सच अ रिच मल्टीपल यू आर एबल टू डाइल्यूट कैपिटल बिकॉज़ जब भी आप डाइल्यूशन करो यू डोंट वांट to let's say uh, you know let the market decide ki nahi kam multiple pe paise raise kar lo ya you ensure ki aapki valuation sasti ho tab investors nay investors aaye even the new investors are willing to enter your company i mean in a qip you raise capital from external investors albeit khud ka bhi aap uh, kuch had tak participation kar sakte ho from a regulatory perspective but those investors are also willing to enter at the valuation that it continues to trade at and obviously at the end of the day uh, what matters is earnings and earnings growth so as long as they are able to deliver that i think at some level this multiple just keeps uh, sort of being maintained if not get re-rated so ishmoe that's all i have uh, you know happy to take questions and obviously we'll urge viewers to to ask their questions so that you know we can answer uh, through the course on in in the in the comment section i think i'll just add one more thing ki why does a high price to book end up uh, ends up becoming a competitive advantage for a bank or an nbfc is suppose kal the ek saket ka bank hai mehrotra bank and ek soic bank hai soic bank and mehrotra bank actually let's just assume trades at a price to book of one times and uh, soic bank suppose ya fir uh, koi aur bhi bank lete hai xyz bank is trading at a price to book of almost 10 times dono ka jo book value hai 10 rupees ka hai to uh, जो जो मेहरोत्रा बैंक है उसका जो कितना मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन हुआ टेन रुपीज के आसपास के आसपास ट्रेड कर रहा है मार्केट में फिर एज अगर जो दूसरे बैंक की मैं एग्जांपल ले रहा हूँ अगर वो टेन एक्स प्राइस टू बुक पे ट्रेड कर रहा है टेन रुपीज उसका बुक वैल्यू है तो उसका मार्केट कैप कितना मार्केट इस टाइम पे स्ट्राइप कर रही है हंड्रेड रुपीज के आसपास का तो सिंपली अगर दोनों को वन रुपीज ऑफ कैपिटल रेज करना है तो अब यहाँ पे बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग हो जाता है अगर कोई भी अगर आप आई फर्स्ट के भी शेयर होल्डर हैं अगर आप एस के भी शेयर होल्डर हैं अगर आप बजाज फाइनेंस के भी शेयर होल्डर हैं तो ये आपको कॉन्सेप्ट समझना बहुत जरूरी है कि सपोज अगर वन रुपी का शेयर आपको या वन रुपी आपको कैपिटल रेज करना है तो जो मेहरोत्रा बैंक है उसमें से ऑलमोस्ट अगर टेन रुपीज अगर आपकी करंट कैपिटलाइजेशन है तो आपको ऑलमोस्ट टेन परसेंट के आसपास डेड्यूशन करना पड़ जाएगा एज अ वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल फिर अगर दूसरे बैंक का हंड्रेड रुपीज का मार्केट कैप है तो उसको सिर्फ वन परसेंट डायल्यूशन करना पड़ेगा मैंने वन परसेंट के हिसाब से शेयर्स आउटस्टैंडिंग जाएंगे मैंने पहले वाले बैंक पे टेन परसेंट के हिसाब से शेयर्स आउटस्टैंडिंग भी पड़ गए जिसकी वजह से अर्निंग्स पर शेयर भी घटेगा जो एक्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स के लिए और आपकी रिटर्न ऑन इक्विटी विल ऑल्सो टेक हाइट 
आईडीएफसी फर्स्ट के केस में भी यही था कि आईडीएफसी फर्स्ट के केस में बुक वैल्यू थर्टी वन रुपीज से सिर्फ थर्टी थ्री रुपीज तक गई है लास्ट टू थ्री इयर्स में इस वजह से बैंक का अगर आप स्टॉक प्राइस देखेंगे तो एक चैनल के अंदर बहुत टाइम से कंसोलिडेट हो रहा है बिकॉज दिस इज दिस हैज बीन द प्रॉब्लम तो शायद से अगर वो मेट्रिक्स इंप्रूव करते हैं आर ओ आर ओ वहाँ पे इंप्रूव होता है तो शायद से मार्केट ज्यादा प्राइस टू बुक दे बट अगेन ये प्राइस टू बुक हाई होना इट एंड बिकमिंग अम्पेटिटिव एडवांटेज वेन इट कम्स टू बैंक एन एन पी एफ सी जैसे चोला मंडलम हो गया आवाज फाइनेंसियर्स हो गया अगेन बजाज फाइनेंस के केस में हो गया सो ऑल दीज कंपनीज है वेरी हाई प्राइस टू बुक आवाज के केस में तो आई डोंट थिंक उनका कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो फोर्टी फिफ्टी परसेंट के आसपास है तो उनको कैपिटल रेस करना पड़ेगा पर चोला मंडलम एंड बजाज फाइनेंस आर वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ दिस सेम हाँ ये बड़ी अच्छी पॉइंट है इसकी अगर आप वैल्यूएशन की बात करो कि यू नो टेन रुपीज किसी का मार्केट कैप और किसी का हंड्रेड रुपीज है तो अगर किसी को एक रुपए भी रेस करना है उसे सिर्फ एक परसेंट डायल्यूट करना है वेर एज किसी और को दस परसेंट डायल्यूट करना पड़ता है सो दैट इज समथिंग विच इज विच इज यू नो वर्थ वाइल फॉर समवन टू थिंक ऑफ वेन दे लुक एट मल्टीपल्स एंड से वाई दिस इज चीप और वाई दिस इज एक्सपेंसिव इट्स इट्स प्रॉब्ली एक्सपेंसिव बिकॉज दिस वन थिंग दैट यू कैन से that ki it has the ability to raise 1 rupee by just diluting 1% rather than someone who has the ability to raise 1 rupee by diluting 10% and i think apart from this standard risks are there only ki agar asset quality yahan se kharab ho ya fir kyunki valuation no doubt high to hai agar 10 times price to book pe to aapka exit math kya work out karta hai iska kisi ko idea nahi hai to basically you are just betting that the company will keep growing at 30 35% for next 6 7 years But if that happens, so आजो two lakh crores का AOM है, that may be somewhere goes to like six seven lakh crores. अगर हम thirty five percent पे दो साल grow करते हैं तो two lakh crore का AOM four lakh crore हो जाएगा. फिर हम grow करते हैं उसको तो I think eight to ten lakh crore के आसपास हो जाएगा. And Indian lending system ये अगर hundred lakh crores का जो grow कर रहा है इस time पे six seven eight percent के आसपास और credit growth pick up हो रही है. तो एज इंक्रीमेंटली जब आप बड़े होते जाते हैं तो आप मार्केट शेयर आप किस स्पीड पे गेन कर सकते हो वो डैट एंड बिकमिंग प्रॉब्लम वो आपको सोचना पड़ेगा कि कहीं इवेंचुअली uh, अगर प्राइस टू बुक मल्टीपल कंप्रेस करता है क्योंकि ग्रोथ रेट स्लो करती है तो आपकी एग्जिट मैथ वर्क करती है नहीं करती सो डैट इज वन रिस्क आई थिंक जो बजाज फाइनेंस का जो आज भी शेयर होल्डर रहेगा तो डैट रिस्क ही बी टेकिंग अदरवाइज वन साइज इज एक्सट्रीमली गुड एंड एक्सलेंट तो रिस्क बताने जरूरी है बिकॉज अपॉर्चुनिटी तो सही है बट आई थिंक रिस्क इज ऑल्सो अ पार्ट ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी अपॉर्चुनिटी और ईच एंड एवरी स्टॉक दैट इज देयर इन द मार्केट एकदम स्पॉट ऑन इनफैक्ट इफ यू रिमेंबर जब ये पूरी यू नो पेटीएम आईपीओ आ रही थी जिस हिसाब से उसके वैल्यूएशन को यू uh, नो you know, डाला जा रहा था ऑलमोस्ट प्राइस टू सेल्स के मेट्रिक पे या सो आई थिंक फ्रॉम अ रिस्क परस्पेक्टिव येस यू नो एनी क्रेडिट आई मीन फॉर एनी लैंडर द रिस्क कैन बी बोथ इंटरनल एंड एक्सटर्नल तो आपका जो एग्जिस्टिंग एसेट बुक है उसमें कभी भी स्ट्रेस दिखेगा तो यू नो मल्टीपल को डी रेट होने में टाइम नहीं लगेगा क्योंकि मार्जिन ऑफ सेफ्टी बहुत लो है फ्रॉम अ वैल्यूएशन परस्पेक्टिव तो देन यू ट्राई एंड गेट योर कम्फर्ट ऑन अदर मेट्रिक्स की ओके इज द लैंडिंग लैंडिंग टीम परफेक्ट डू दे हैव अ गुड कलेक्शन मैकेनिज्म राइट अगर आप लेट से पीपल और फुट ऑन द ग्राउंड की बात करो तो आज भी बजाज इज द पार्टनर ऑफ चॉइस फॉर ओ ई एम्स तो अगर कल को एक विवो जैसी कंपनी इंडिया में आके मोबाइल फोन्स बेचना चाहती है और उसे पता है इंडिया एक प्राइस सेंसिटिव मार्केट है जहाँ पे यू you नो know, लोगों को ईएमआई uh, में चीजें खरीदने का शौक बड़ा है फॉर समवन वन अर्निंग टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज अ मंथ उसको एक बारह हजार का फोन ही खरीदना है बिकॉज ही वॉन्ट्स अ स्मार्टफोन इन इज हैंड एंड वॉन्ट्स टू गेट एक्सेस टू द होल डिजिटल इको सिस्टम ही कैंट अफोर्ड टू बाई इट इन अपराइट कैश सो ही विल गो फॉर अ ई एम आई और यू नो लेट से the whole uh, no cost EMI product that they find it. तो कहीं ना कहीं you know आज भी Bajaj Finance becomes the partner of choice for these OEMs. So yes these are things then then you look at when you move beyond valuation. But risks की बात करें तो yes margin of safety काफी low है from a price to I mean pure a valuation perspective पे देखो. Then you try and delve deeper why does it trade at that multiple? Does it really have a solid franchise with an underlying growth business? कि ये सिर्फ uh you know people are just trying to mop up or drive a narrative out of it so that's one and second obviously there is also a key man risk or a execution risk so tomorrow if for example obviously uh, this was also a question which was asked in the latest con call ki uh, you know people someone asked ki rajiv jain are you are you retiring or or you know are you uh, how long are you there to usne kaha ki yaar last agm mein i have been appointed so i'm there for another 5 years But what to say कि कल को एक नया लैंडर गेट्स वेरी अग्रेसिव और दे वॉन्ट लेट्स टॉप मैन फॉर द जॉब 
or you know some other lender wants to let's say re-engineer or re-engage things it could also be a top tier bank right so us perspective say there's a, there could also be a key man execution risk because bahut bar kya hota hai when management changes happen in banks a lot of the initiatives or the dna in which let's say a bank or an nbfc operates changes and we have multiple examples for that if we see in, in the indian context chahe wo banks ho nbfcs ho even pivoting repivoting mein bhi bahut bar blow ups hote so that also is a risk right so at the end finally the risk is on the whole tech led transformation that they are planning to do what if the tech is not that superior as you know people think it can be obviously abhi tak usne ye demonstrate ki hai ki you know bharat mein jab upi nahi tha ya jab aadhar based lend aadhar based authentication nahi tha tab se ye log cash flow based lending ko kafi achhi tarike se kar rahe the to aage chal ke is tech going to work to their advantage or is someone else going to come and disrupt them whether hdfc bank gets more aggressive into this space because you know they are also uh, working on their tech there could be multiple factors at play so competitive intensity is again something because kahin pe bhi agar logo ko super normal profit or super normal growth dikhe wo zyada der rehta nahi i mean that's what basic economics tells us right multiple players come in and then the profit pool gets extinguished so yes uh, this also is is a is a risk which uh, one should be careful about Uh, when they look at uh, bajaj finance yeah and i think i'll just conclude with one last is then uh, so jitne bhi audience ye video ko dekh rahi hai to aap log hame comment section mein aapko jo bhi questions aap puch sakte hain and if you love the session you can just drop a hell yes in the chat section below so we'll keep doing more and more such uh, sessions in the future as well so one last is which i think i'll just conclude with is ki ek aur risk hota hai ki ek scale ka bhi risk hota hai banking aur nbfcs mein ki jaise agar aap kotak bank ka example lo to kotak bank is actually growing slower than hdfc bank even though price to book multiple zyada milta hai because uh, mr uday kotak keeps on saying that there are some segments or there are some sectors which i don't want to lend to तो क्योंकि अभी यहाँ पे वैल्यूएशन भी इतना ज्यादा रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी भी इतनी ज्यादा और ग्रोथ भी इतनी फास्ट आ रही है तो ये भी एक प्रॉब्लम हो सकती है कि बियॉन्ड अ सर्टेन स्केल कि आपको उन सेगमेंट्स में ना जाना पड़े जहाँ पे रिस्क ज्यादा हो एंड डैट माइट सॉर्ट ऑफ प्ले हैव अ विद एसेट क्वालिटी तो ये भी एक रिस्क रह सकता है जरूरी नहीं है कि रिस्क हो ना हो बट ये एक रिस्क एक स्केल का रिस्क है कि अब यू एक्चुअली स्केल टू लाइक टेन लाख करोड़ जी एम जस्ट एज एन एग्जाम्पल और ट्वेल्व लाख करोड़ जी एम तो आपको कुछ कुछ ऐसे सेगमेंट्स में भी जाना पड़ेगा जहाँ पे बेसिकली आपका जो रिस्क रिवॉर्ड रेशियो वो शायद से आपके फेवर में स्क्यूड ना हो तो अगेन दिस इज आल्सो वन ऑफ द रिस्क जो लोग सोचते नहीं कि स्केलेबिलिटी में अगर आज मतलब बीस हजार करोड़ से दो लाख करोड़ तक तो ठीक था बट यहाँ से पैसा बनाने के लिए इसको दो लाख करोड़ से पंद्रह लाख करोड़ तक अगर एम जाने तो कितना इंक्रीमेंटल मार्केट शेयर वेन करेगा और कौन कौन से सेगमेंट्स में जाना पड़ेगा दैट इज समथिंग दैट इज वर्थ थिंकिंग अबाउट तो विद दिस अगेन वील कंक्लूड द सेशन एंड if any of you have any questions just uh, drop those questions in the uh, comment section below and we'll answer those uh, questions after this session thank you so much for joining us thank you so uh, thank you so much saket for agreeing to do this and we'll keep uh, meeting uh, again and again on this platform thank you thanks bye bye thank you